Welcome to Shorty Supercoach. Today we're going to take a little bit of a look at the forward line mid prices. This is definitely an area of the ground that a few people have been getting stuck into some value actually. There's a few guys. I did do a little versus series not too long ago, but I think even still, you know, the likes of Cornelio, Kerno, Rayner, he's definitely had a bit of uh, talk about him of late with some positional change and stuff like that with Neil. And I also think the forward line's getting pretty interesting too with, you know, the news of Duncan. I think he was a lock probably two, three, four weeks ago. Now the talk is maybe not looking quite as safe for round one. Has had the calf issues and again, they've sort of flared up. So he's touch and go, I think, for round one, which, gee, even if he gets up, you know, with his age, the way last year panned out, honestly, I'm sort of thinking probably look elsewhere. So... I will dive into that pretty soon. As you can see, just wanted to give the, the live on Wednesday a bit of a pump up. Um, hopefully you guys can get along and join me. Always good for a few questions and a bit of banter. Now, speaking of which, when I dive in the laptop, I like to you know give you a little shorty life update, what's been going on, You know, potentially get some antivirus protection, but we'll do that another time. Um, but today it's actually not a story. Pretty quiet weekend actually for shorty, just... Uh, Sat around, worked both days, had the Saturday night off, a couple of cocktails, my mate made me a margarita, put some chilli in it, was a spicy one, said, shorty, it's not that bad, you don't mind a bit of heat. Then it kicked my ass. it was brutal, but then I just made myself a nice little pina colada, it was lovely. But aside from that, I want to put, call out to you guys and get your advice. Now, it's fair to say in shorty's life, he's not known for his fashion or style depending who you ask. Now, as you know, I've been attending TAFE. You know, so far, I made a reasonable impression, I'd like to think. Today, I woke up, was a little bit, uh, like I said, had work pretty late last night on the Sunday. Realised I hadn't washed my jeans. Okay, chuck the shorts on. Nah, all right. The, the, the shoes that I would normally wear with my shorts, just, a, you know, a nice pair of white shoes, yep. Cool, got them. Ah, don't really have me no-show white socks, which are crucial to the uh, the total fit. So I thought, ah, oh, fuck it. I'll just, I'll just wear me dress shoes with my shorts. Now, controversial, I know. But I feel as if the impression I've made throughout my early days at TAFE, I can get away with it. But that may not be the case. Now... My mate did take a snap of me. It was accompanied by a fairly savage and scathing caption, which is not in this photo, but I'll let you guys be the judge. And I'd like you uh, to provide me a little bit of feedback on the setup of the shoe department. And just let me know if sure he needs to smarten up his act or, or what have you, because uh, so far the verdict has been negative. So yeah, there you have it, a bit of a um, dress shoe into your shorts arrangement, into your black jumper. Um, yeah, don't know, would enjoy your feedback. Fair to say the initial feedback around the household has not been complimentary, but uh, would love your thoughts. Ah, we have a little bit of fun around here, because I'll tell you what, you got to sometimes. Now, look, we, we had a look at the Ford premiums just the other day. And I did take those premiums all the way down to, I think it was Zach Butters. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys are pretty interested on the Dugowie Butters Heaney sort of setup. I'll give just a quick two cents worth and then we can sort of jump into some other guys. I mean, Taron Thomas has proven very popular as well. Or well, not very, but, you know, getting some interest. Zach Bailey, all the talk about him getting some more midfield time. I must admit, I think with the concern around Duncan, I feel like a lot of people, myself included, um, will be thinking an F2 will look a lot like Zach Butters. And, look, I reckon there's scope for an F3 to be a Dugowie or a Heaney or a Bailey. I am putting my faith in Heaney. I truly believe that we're going to see some very good numbers back to his high 90s. Um, I think Dugowie, the back end of his year, has to be considered. From what I read the other day, he'll attend a lot of centre bounces. It'll be sort of him and Jamie Elliott by the looks of it. One will be forward, one will be centre bounce, and, and a bit of a rotation through there. 
So he's always going to be a guy that plays a bit of forward time. The talk is that, you know, Neil might play a little bit more wing. You know, gosh, that was concerning, wasn't it, when you saw Fagan talking about that? But it certainly brings in Bailey to consideration. It brings in Rayner way, way more consideration. We'll touch on him in a minute. Um, try and pick up Shea Bolton in your draft team because I tell you what, I really think he's got a, you know, probably early 90s, mid 90s year ahead of him. Big fan of him. But yeah, I think Butters is quickly becoming a real big lock if he wasn't already. I already thought um, after probably not being red hot on him last year, certainly want to start him this year. But we'll just scroll through, you know, from here. Um, this video will be time stamped as well. So we'll try and keep it, you know, shortish, but we'll try and also give every player that deserves something to be said, we'll give them their time of day. So I'll just try and scroll through and probably be garnered by the ownership of, um, you know, what's kind of piquing people's interests. But yeah, so far, look, I think most people are probably looking at grabbing one of those, uh, you know, aforementioned players in the mid to high 400s. And then, you know, it really starts to drop away as we kind of get into no man's land. You know, through here, of course, Luke Jackson I will talk about because I think I didn't talk too much about him in the forward line, uh, the ruck one because I think most people are looking at him as a forward dual position. So what I will say is I think the rise of Luke Jackson probably for me um, this year for 2022 is more of a consideration about maybe not going with Gorn as opposed to it being about going with Jackson himself. I think the impact um, will be more about, gee whiz, can we start Gorn as opposed to, gosh, we've got to start Jackson. So he is still the second ruck at Melbourne. You know, that's a fact. He's still going to have inconsistencies in his game, but he's definitely going to push that average beyond 80. Now, the thing for me, right, is he could boost his average into the 90s, he could boost it into the early 80s, he could, you know, sort of bump it up by 15 or so points. One thing we know is it's going up. But at 390k, doesn't really speak to me. It's a bit of a nothing pick for mine. I think Jackson's a guy that will pick many, many, many times throughout the next decade. But I'm quite happy to just let this one go through to the keeper. Like I said just before, it's not to suggest that he's not going to have a great year and, again, make another step towards being a premier ruckman in the comp. But there will still be days where, you know, maybe 50-50 is the ruck with Gorn. Maybe it's 70-30 in favour of Gorn. And I still feel like they will promote Jackson more and more as time goes on. But he is still a second ruck. And uh, I just feel like he could be anything, but it's more the price for me. Um, you're not picking him at that price to make your money. Yeah, he offers some value. There's no doubt about that, but not stacks compared to what we have a little bit further down when we keep scrolling. And I'd be really shocked if he was a keeper. So that's what you've got to ask yourself. When you get between this 350 k mark, you've got to ask yourself, what, what's the point of this pick? Is he to make me coin? Or do I genuinely think I can keep him all year? And if he doesn't really, if it doesn't really come back and say this guy's probably going to make me a hundred k minimum, honestly, you probably want one twenty, one fifty k. It's all about what you value a trade at. And if you're not going to keep him, then all of a sudden it starts to make that selection look a little bit pointless. I really am quite happy to pass on him just for the moment. But he's a super talent, there's no doubt about that. I reckon Tom Powell's a good one for your draft. I feel like he's you know, going to have an improvement in his numbers as well and could be a future super coach star for us, but not, not just yet for Classic. Callum Coleman-Jones is also probably... A few people might be just thinking about him. It's a no from me just because there's so much going on at North Melbourne. And a bit like Jackson is while I think he will... He's gone to North Melbourne for opportunity, and I think he'll get it. He's you know, shown at AFL level what he can do in the forward line and in the ruck, but it's just, you know, again, he's just not cheap enough. I think Goldstein's still the guy, even though they'll be looking to promote this next-generation ruck that is Callum Coleman-Jones, but no, nah, quite happy to pass on him for the moment. We're probably going to start to get to 
really the whole point of this video, you know, because there's a lot of guys that just no one gives a stuff about these blokes floating around here. Um, Daniel Rioli is in three percent of sides, and you know, again, I'm I'm not too keen on him at all. I know a move to the half back line saw an improvement in his numbers and definitely some good games, but I just don't see it. I look for the the price he's at. There's just some guys that are better options, a bit cheaper. I think that's all that really needs to be said on it. Yeah, there's some upside in what he can do, and the positional change should see some really good numbers comparatively to what he was doing as a small forward. But you know, we'll um, and it's no secret who we're about to scroll onto. There's some guys that really have some major upside. Um, well, in just a few moments' time. Hello, Jade Gresham. What is up? And this is where it starts to get juicy. This is what I think most people are looking at with their forward line. We're starting Dunkley, most likely. We're looking at one or two of Dugowie, Butters, Martin, um, Heaney, Bailey, Thomas. You know, two of those guys probably, maybe just one. And then we're sort of saying, how many of Gresham, Cornelio, Kerno, and Rayner can we start? And that is where you'll earn the big bickies. So they are cheap. They are offering great value. And they are currently in a lot of sides. So let's jump in and dissect a few of these mid-price forwards. Jade Gresham, 299 A bloke that we have probably thought would break through prior to this. And has obviously had his injury setbacks and concerns. Probably teased so far in his career. I think he's had some stunning games as a mid-forward type, always shown that ability to be really dynamic around the stoppage in particular. You know, St Kilda probably needs his pace on the ball. Um, they've got a lot of balls in there, but his pace could be crucial. Now, the last two years, three games and 11 games. That's a big concern, but it's the reason we get him so cheap. Prior to that, 79, 84 average, and that was when he was just teasing, you know, we probably because he's not young. He's, he's 24. Um, and this 2020 was probably when many thought we could see a big improvement and we just got all sorts I'm not sure how many of those might be injury affected let's have a little bit of a look but we got all sorts so he's ob he obviously came off in that round one but otherwise pretty much normal game time so it was all over the place and then we saw his season come to an end against the Cats and even last year it looked like, boom, he's finally going to come through with what we thought. An 82, but a good game. 28 in seven inside 50s. That's a good game in anyone's book. A few clangers. Brought this super coach score down. Then 29, 10 inside 50s. Nine clearances. Thank you very much. 104. On the numbers, probably looked like it deserved a bit more, even with a goal in there, but it is what it is. And then we saw him rack up the six touches and uh, just score 20 points in a better quarter of a game. So, And then the season was done. I think it all lies in the position for me, and, wow, that's a lie. It's probably more about the position and how that body is tracking. How's that body tracking? He's missed a lot of footy, a lot of footy, and that's a massive concern for him to... He's going to make you money, there's no doubt about it, but I think what I'll do in a moment is is probably just, probably just rank who I prefer out of the four, because... You know, it's Cornelio, Kerno, Rayner, Gresham. You can't have all four, I wouldn't have thought. Some people have three. Some people might say, Shorty, I just want two. What's your top two? We'll get to that. But I think out of all those four guys, I'm most keen to see how Gresham returns in the Pracky games because I think there's still a really strong chance that his split between mid and forward is real even. But I just want to find out. You know, I just want to find out. He's missed so much footy. Is he fit enough to get back into that midfield? You know, the Saints actually have a few going through there now. Hanabry will be looking to get back after, you know, being missing a lot of footy. Hunter Clark will probably be looking to burst in there. And, you know, they've, they've already got a, a solid enough midfield with a few young guys sort of banging down the door as well. So do they need a bit of his craft up forward? You know, what's the split look like? So I'm really looking forward to seeing how that plays out. Um. Because the, the one query on him and, you know, of these four guys, Cornelio is the one guy that's got the runs on the board. The others have never shown that ability to score massive. So 
not only are we hoping that his body holds up, but we're also hoping for... I mean, you'd take 85. You'd, you'd take that 2019 average, but we're probably we're probably hoping for a bit more. Is that possible? We're going to have to wait and see. It's hard to make a definitive statement without seeing the Pracky games because it's, it's just so important, and which is half the reason I haven't picked a side yet. I know a few people sort of asking for me to pick a side. And, and look, mentally, I basically have. I may as well just do it. I'll try and do it next week, but... Um, I just really, there's a few guys that you just can't, it's just guesswork. It's just guesswork until you see them play. Run out in the field, you get a feel for how fit they truly are and, and what the coach sort of sees their position look like. Now if we make our way down to Cam Arena, who's in similar percent of sides, a touch more, but I'm red hot on Cam Arena. Uh, I, was, I was red hot on him last year. And it was tragedy. Now, he doesn't have the runs on the board either. Most of his career has been played largely as a forward with stints in the midfield, sort of explosive. And a bit like Petrarca once upon a time, the query was that he didn't have the tank. Big-bodied guy hasn't always looked like a fit and firing athlete. He does now. Fagan comes out, I think it was yesterday or, or today, comes out and says, yeah, look, you know, Jared Lyons, Lockie Neal might have a bit of a change up in the role. I don't think Neal's... You know, Blokes a Brownlow medalist. I don't think we're going to start playing Neil on a half forward flank. He might not spend as much centre bounce time as a couple of years back. I think Lions will definitely play a bit more forward because we did see that a little bit. It was already tabled before um, Rainer did go down this time last year. Zorko played a bit more f- uh, midfield, so did Lions. I think that I think the coaching staff at the Lions do want to promote the likes of Rainer, Bailey, and McCluggage. So. Keep a look out for that. But Cameron Rayner, at his best, I think we could see a real explosive goal-kicking midfielder, you know, capable of winning it on the inside, capable of hurting you on the outside. It's no no accident he was drafted number one. So um, I really do think that he's a lock, to be honest. I really do think he's a lock. Look, prior to today, I just wanted to see where he would play and line up. And, and look, these numbers aren't telling you anything. I just wanted to see how many games he'd played. 63, 22 years old. But, um, yeah, I just really wanted to see some confirmation that they weren't going to sort of ease him back after the injury. He wasn't going to sort of you know hang out on a half-forward flank. But, no, nah, looks like they're red-hot keen for him to play basically pure mid. So if the practice minutes and uh, all that sort of backs it up, the bloke's a lock, an absolute lock. So I really look forward to seeing how the Lions do play out that midfield because there's a lot of big names running through there. So that's a watch and see, but all roads sort of lead to pick and Rainer, I think, at the moment. Gee, things were getting a little bit dark there. Chuck the light on. Um, we are underway. So, yeah, I think Rainer definitely a lock. Gresham's a bit of a watch for me, but then we move on to Cockatoo, who's also looking pretty fit and firing, but I don't think we'll go near him. Coleman is um, sort of getting a little bit of interest as well, but look, I'm just I'm going to touch on him briefly. I'm not too keen at all. I don't think he's really ever shown genuine scoring ability, and a bit like Rioli, look, there's just better options around him. Maybe if these other blokes weren't sitting around, we might consider him a bit more because, yeah, he might play half-back flank. Traditionally, that's not a bad place to score some points, but he's never really shown it. I, I'd need to see a fair bit. And when you've got Rayner just north of him and you've got uh, Stephen Cornelio just south of him, well, it sort of rules him out of the conversation. And I probably don't have to talk too much on Cornelio because 65% of sides he's already in probably speaks enough. Um and I think I read the other day, 80% midfield. He'd spent about 80% of the preseason in the midfield group. But having said that, um, Daniel's going down and Green missing the opening portion of the season has him and Taranto as potentially spending a bit more time as those mid-sized forwards, which is what they've done before. That's why we can pick them in the forward line. You know, this stuff happens for a reason. <laughs> but um, I still think Cornelio... If he's back fully fit, he's so much better. Like I said, so much better than where he's priced at. Like I said, with Gresham and Rayner, we've uh, we've got to question the body, but we've also got to question what, what can they score. 
Cornelio, it's not even a question. If he's playing midfield and he's fit, he averages in the 90s easily. At his best, he averages in the 100s. I would probably, if I was predicting, I'd imagine, you know, he could he could have a little bit of the, uh, not quite the Jack Siebels. That's I got ahead of myself there. But early 90s, I would think. Because I still think he's going to play not quite as much of a prominent role in the midfield like he did, you know, when he really burst on the scene. I think he averaged 108, 107 sort of thing. But at that price, uh, for me, the only question is, is he fit? Is he ready to go? And if he gets through a pracky game, fine, looking good, playing some midfield minutes, that's all I need, some midfield minutes. It'll only get better when some of those small forwards do return in the early stages of the season for the Giants. We'll lock and load him. So um, no matter what you think of him, if he does get through the pracky game playing some midfield, you've got to roll the dice. You've just got to find out because if you don't get on that boat and he sails off into the glory of averaging in the 90s and you're sitting there, not having him in your side, yeah, you could be kicking yourself. Like people who didn't have Jack Zebel last year, you're just kicking yourself. So Will Phillips is one for the future. Obviously not for this year, but I reckon he is, uh, you know, definitely a guy that will pick down the track. I'm a fan of him. So again, if you're in a keeper league or something like that, maybe just keep him under your hat. Um, hoping Tyson Stangle can snag a few sausages down at the Cattery. I'm excited about him from a Geelong point of view. And then, of course, we um, just keep scrolling a little bit. To, I mean, people were talking about Willie Rioli. I, I seem to have heard his name so often, but he's in 2% of sides, and, and rightfully so, not not interested at all. Um, Charlie Kerno, 27% of sides. I'm really surprised, to be honest. Um, I just think Key Ford coming back from so much that he's come back from the best comparison is probably the Joe Danaher, he he will have some days particularly if Carlton start to really play some better footy, he will have some days where he does kick a bag and score some good goals, um, score some good points but oh, he, do, he doesn't interest me at all to be honest um, like I said if I was ranking them before um, I would have Cornelio 1 Rainer 2 Gresham 3, Kerno 4, and uh, really tight between Canelio and Rayner, I must admit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I, maybe I'm missing something. I know he's a superstar in the making, could be anything, but just just coming back from these sort of injuries as a key forward is, is just so damn difficult. Scoring in general as a key forward is difficult. So um, I've haven't had any interest in starting him and still don't so i'd love to hear your thoughts you know let me know what's lighting your fire about him obviously he's a super talent and he's dirt cheap i understand that um but look yeah if i was starting four mid prices in the forward line yeah he'd make the cut but i'm probably only going to start two or three so therefore it, it leaves him out of my calculations so Happy to um, happy to barrack from afar. I, I love watching him play. You know, when he kicked that seven or whatever it was. Was it, was it against the Dogs? Gee, that was so exciting. He was just plucking everything, kicking goals from everywhere. And against the Tigers when he was on fire. So exciting. You know, I'll be there round one, Richmond versus Carlton. And I'll be hoping he absolutely gets a hold of the Tigers and kicks a bag. But I won't be starting him. So we'll see how that one pans out. But, um, you know, developing. Well, he's not really developing. But younger style key forwards coming off long-term injury. Big no no for old Shorty. Um, yeah, Will Brody definitely a guy who should be considered, but is a bit of a watch for mine. Freo bat pretty deep in the midfield; they really do. I know he's been showing some really good signs in the preseason, but for me, he's a, he's just a watch. Um, I liked him at Gold Coast. I was surprised he can get an opportunity. He's a bit like Charlie Constable, you know. Big bodied mid who's just sort of been shown not much love. Hasn't got much love over the years, has he? You know, he's sort of been tainted as too slow and um but you know on the face of it, you know, tall, inside mid, strong, good tackler. You know, you would think he deserves an opportunity. So hopefully he can get that at the Dockers, but I just get the sense that he's not even in their top five mids, which leads me to think, you know, there's gonna be some half forward flank time. Maybe a handful of centre bounce attendances. We'll have to wait and see. You know, that's just me guessing. I'm not a coach at Fremantle. I've got no idea. That's just me guessing. So 
we're going to have to wait and see how the Dockers do shape up and, and how it looks in the pre-season. There's often surprises when teams actually do show you how they're structuring up. So I'll be really interested to, to wait and see how it all does look. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I reckon that just about wraps it up, I think. Um, yeah, I reckon you know we'll, we'll do something on the rookies soon. I didn't get a video out over the weekend. Very rare for old shorty. It was yeah, you know, just a bit too much work. Had a mate come down from Ballarat, uh, just crashed at mine. He had a box, but I saw him in the morning. Didn't see him in the night. I was uh, tucked into bed by the time he rolled home, which is unusual for me on a Saturday night. But so I've got a few vid- uh, a few videos in store. I'm trying to smash out one every day this week, which will be sweet. But yeah, I'd love to um, love to get your thoughts on how many of these mid prices you are starting. And um, yeah, if you agree with what I said, feel free to comment. If you don't agree, also let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So um, definitely being appreciating the support. We're getting a few subs through, a few likes. So it's good stuff. So again, thanks very much. And uh, yeah, let Shorty know what his fashion's sort of looking like. And uh, we'll talk to you all again soon. Have a good one. Cheers.